back to the epic saga of the weight of stormtroopers, an important galactic issue. I think we've shown, possibly, that there is a, a statistically significant difference, or more correctly, our study found a statistically significant difference between the weight of clones and um, non-clones, even having excluded different stormtroopers. So we've excluded one group and we've still found a difference. Bear in mind the caveat of variation in p-values, however, when reporting these kind of results. But it's enough, at least, for us to think there may be another factor at play. And perhaps um, the emperor runs an oppressive regime. And, in fact, since he's taken over in a more dictatorship fashion, job satisfaction amongst stormtroopers has decreased, leading to reduced commitment to military activity and overeating to compensate. So what we, we've, we've done is, it so happens that uh, routinely Republic clone troopers were questioned on their job satisfaction and we've decided to repeat this activity amongst stormtroopers. Um, we've sent out a job a satisfaction questionnaire I think SAVA in Induction Week did do a, a talk on questionnaire design and um, I suspect that my questionnaire here doesn't conform to the standards that she probably set out uh, in that lecture. But that's it. So I've said, are you very satisfied? Very dissatisfied? I'd rather be a droid. To answer, very satisfied. The Emperor is an amazing boss. So that's how they've got to rate themselves. Let's, uh, let, let's write ourselves some kind of hypothesis or question. Um, so is uh, job satisfaction the same between stormtroopers, ST, and Republic clones, I'll see. So that's going to be our question, is the satisfaction. So we could set a null hypothesis that there is no difference in job satisfaction between uh, these two groups, as measured by our survey. Uh, and so in, we, you set up this thing called a contingency table. And, and all it is, is we've listed our our grouping variable there, and we've also listed another variable across here. So essentially, we've got two two variables that we're making a comparison of. You could have more, so this could go this list here. We've got Republic, Imperial. Uh, you could have other eras, and if you look on Wikipedia, there'll be old era, new era, um, I don't know, lots of different eras. You could you could list different types here. You're not restricted to. I've just put two in because it's easy to do the calculations. We're going to go into some calculations that I would never expect you to do. Um, mortals should never have to do calculations unless they're also computer programmers. And so uh, I, I wouldn't expect that, but um, it may be useful to understand how this works and what the tables are telling you, or what the, the test is telling you that we're going to go into. So anyway, we have these things that are called our observed frequencies. So that the observed frequencies are simply, amongst Republic um, clone troopers, 25 were very satisfied. And amongst Imperial uh, stormtroopers, um, zero were very satisfied. So very dissatisfied there but 75 were very dissatisfied. And so it's just a way, that's simply a table for recording our, our, our research results. And so now what we want to know is what is the probability that the observed difference could have occurred by chance? If there is any, is any observed difference. 
again, bearing in mind that confusion over whether a p-value is a meaningful parameter or not anyway. We can use this thing uh, for this kind of data presented in this kind of way in a contingency table. We can use a chi-squared test. It, you can think of it as a test of association, but it simply tests that null hypothesis uh, set out here. That uh, the, it's another one of these uh, tests for looking for differences amongst two groups, but we're not testing means, um, and it could be used for nominal variables that have to be ordered. We want to say, are there differences in, in somehow in the grouping between two sets of data? So it's a kind of very general test. And to do that, we have to calculate what are called the expected frequencies. So what an expected frequency is, in, in the first contingency table, we calculated observed frequencies. So this is simply what we measured. Questioned lots of people, we got their responses, and we tabulated it. How many people are very satisfied in one group or the other, etc. The expected frequencies, we, we then say, well, what proportion of the people that I questioned are from each group. So if you look here, I don't have equal group sizes. So the Republic, Stormtroopers, well, there's 81 of them. And Imperial and Stormtroopers, there's 112. That means even if both respond equally, so half of, uh, I don't know, the same percentage, let's say 20 let's say 50% uh, of them say they're very dissatisfied. If 50% of Republic clone troopers say they're very dissatisfied and 50% of Imperial clone troopers say they're very dissatisfied, I would still expect the numbers here to be different. And all the expected frequencies does is scale it so that you can directly compare the numbers. And if it helps, the ca I'll show you the, the well, one, one of the ways of calculating that. I think it's the most um, clear way. So all, initially, you just calculate what portion of the people that you sampled are from each group. So here, 42% 40, are Republic and 58% are Stormtroopers. Okay, so that's just 81 out of 193, 112 out of 193, where 193 is the total number of people questioned. And then you can calculate the expected frequencies in each, each box. Because you, you say, well, I know that 25, uh, sorry, I know that 42% of my population, or of my question, sorry, of my question sample, 42% of them are Republic clones, 58% of them are Imperial Stormtroopers, but of everyone that's dissatisfied, I know there's 100 of them. So 42% of 100 is 42, 58% of 100 is 58. So then I get the expected number, i.e. 42 and 58, if there's no difference between these groupings, and there's no difference in the response between the two groupings. So just what I would expect if there's no difference. Again, I wouldn't expect you to cal calculate this, but it's very useful to understand what these different tables tell you because they give you some indication uh, of what's going on. So if you know under the assumption of the null hypothesis, you know what the expected response rate would be. Then you can compare it to what you actually observed. And that's the comparison is done in this way. I've called it relative squared difference. And that's simply because you take your observed value, you subtract from it the expected value, 
Well, of course, that could be a negative number, so you square it, and then you just divide it by the expected value. It doesn't matter so much about the calculation, but what it does matter is it's telling you how far away that value, the, um, the actual observed value is from what you might expect under the null hypothesis. And if you know that, then it helps you interpret the values. So when I look at the table of the relative squared difference, that's telling me if I get a big number, I know that there's a big departure from the expected values. So that's telling me there's quite a big difference um, from what I might expect under the null hypothesis, um, subjectively. So 6.9 is definitely bigger than 0.5. So 0.5 is telling me there's less of a difference um, to expected. But of course, what I really want to know is um, what the probability is that I can that that this difference could be uh, just down to chance, and that's done through the chi-squared statistic which is basically adding up all of the values in the table, getting this thing called chi-squared statistic, and then in the olden days, you would have a table of, uh, of values. You'd look it up and get a p-value. Of course, nobody does that, and I don't expect you ever to do that either. So we um, do it using a computer. What's more important is you actually understand what the p-value means. And by now, I'm sure you do. Oh, there you go. So we can open up, uh, we can go back to SPSS, and I'll just show you how SPSS does this. One of the reasons, I mean, there's many reasons for using SPSS, but if you have it and you, and you use it, and it is, it's free, so you can, IT will send you a link and you can install it on your computer. I've, I've now been told, and they'll send you a license key that you put in that's valid for a year, and they'll send you another one once, once that expires. But it allows you to download these data files that we've covered in the lectures and actually play and look at, at the outcomes of these tests and gain familiarity with how it works, or, or not how the test works, but the results that you get and how you can interpret them. And it's that familiarity with how the tests report the results and how you might interpret them and then discuss them that is really the important characteristic of this um, course.